here that will do as well. Um, so, Weston and I have been co organizers. This is Weston. And I'm Derek, by the way. I'm Derek. I think I've introduced myself to everyone here. I don't know if I have it, I'll get to you. I promise. But um, our goal here for Rails and Man is to create, for lack of a better term, a way for people to learn Ruby on Rails. And if you're here, you may have heard the term Ruby on Rails as it being awesome for starting new businesses, building new pet projects, or whatever. And all those things are true. I'm a little biased. But uh, hopefully, we will not only be biased, but give you a good explanation of what it's good for and how you can use it and effectively um, start making you dangerous and give you a community in which you can start practicing and communicating your issues and getting help and having a way to air your grievances with the framework. As much literature as there is about Ruby on Rails, as much hype as there is, uh, picking it up is actually pretty difficult. There's a pretty substantial learning curve to it because being a full stack web framework, there's a lot of moving pieces to Ruby on Rails, and, so, and there's also a lot of magic to it um, with the touted conventional configuration. So we're going to help you kind of get, uh, navigate those waters and get you up and running. Um, so to do that, we have initiated these monthly and hopefully bi-weekly eventually. We can find another sponsor or we can give us more money, I don't know. Um, we can do a bi-weekly event or a monthly event where we divide it into three sections. So this will actually be the first section where we talk about and give an introduction as to what we're going to be doing for the second session, which will be a live coding workshop, get up and running and actually do real things in the environment with other people helping you. Uh, there are a few individuals, I'll introduce a couple that I know. Uh, Josh over there, if I may introduce him, will be roaming around helping people get started with Ruby on Rails. Um, he's brilliant, he works with Lincoln Social, he does Rails for Litter, huzzah. Um, who else is helping me? I think, I believe Mo will also be someone helping out. Um, so Mo, if you can raise your hand and make yourself known. Um, anyone else? Your tears hang out. Are you in a position to help? So introduce yourself. And I'll go up Joel in the back is also. Here. Joel in the back is a Rails guy. So we've got a couple people that have been programming in Rails enough to be able to uh, help you out with issues. So if you have any questions, we'll be running around during that workshop time and we'll uh, guide you through how to build an open camp, is what we're calling it. It was free camp in the description. Um, but so why is the authority? Authoritative decision and went with OpenCap, and I had no reason to argue against it. So there we are, we're OpenCap now. Um, and so to build OpenCap, um, it's based off Basecamp. And if you don't know, Basecamp is kind of, if not the originating um, project that Ruby on Rails was built for. So DHH, the creator and omnipotent force behind uh, Ruby on Rails, actually is the lead engineer over at, um, at Basecamp. And Basecamp was built leveraging Ruby, which was super obscure at the time. No one was even using Ruby. And then built a web framework out of it, and it's evolved into a massive uh, project that it is today. So in spirit of that, we have kind of gone to the beginnings of Rails and and we'll begin to build <coughs> up a simple project manager that'll be on GitHub. So we have our Rails on GitHub. Some of you have probably already been there start getting set up. Um, and so that's kind of, we're using that as a learning tool. So you'll be building that and we'll kind of extend that in the future. And then the third session, that at the closing of 30 minutes, uh, we'll be giving kind of advanced, not, not really advanced, but theoretical presentations about web development and Rails in general. So topics like what does convention over configuration really mean? Why is that valuable? You hear it all the time if you read anything about Rails. And if you don't know what convention is in the context of web development, we're here to help you understand that so you can understand the value of Ruby on Rails. Um, you know, what is MVC? What the value is for that? Um, what is a database? How do databases work? How does Rails work with databases? Why is it unique from other frameworks that you may have heard of? And then other topics too, like test driven development is a big thing in Ruby on Rails. And if you're a Ruby on Rails developer, you want to consider doing test driven development. It will help you along with that and understanding the value of that. Um, you know, things like JavaScript, advanced JavaScript, copy script. There's a lot of things in Ruby on Rails that there's a lot of theory behind. And then the last 30 minutes of our evening will be dedicated to giving a little bit of insight into those topics. So 
pretty much we're trying to stretch your knowledge and experience with Ruby on Rails. Uh, we make the assumption you want to build stuff with Rails. And so we want to introduce what we're going to build, and then we want to build it, and then when we talk about the more complex things that you could build with it. So really it's trying to stretch you in multiple dimensions, um, and not just be a meetup group where we eat pizza and talk, but actually eat pizza and talk, you know, stretch you, uh, and then afterwards you can come out and for the next two weeks kind of like, I've been able to do the simple things, I know how to think about the intermediate things, um, and maybe do some of the complex stuff. So, trying to help you grow multi-dimensionally. And I want to snap a picture of you so my mom can be proud. <laughs> Smile, look like you're working studiously. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> As Wes is looking at me. Wes, I'm like you're doing something. <laughs> Everyone look like you're amazed. <laughs> Not you, Wes, you're talking. <laughs> Alright, well, you're all amazed by the blank screen. I know it's all right. Alright. I'll do one at the end of this where y'all sleep. <laughs> anyway, kick it off on us. Alright, so. Are there any questions for that in the work section before we get started? Anyone have any comments and concerns before we get started? Anyone? I think I've made it around to check the Rails environment status for most of you. Is anyone not currently on uh, Ruby on one issue? Uh, so, the rest of you guys have the vagrant virtual <laughs> First of all, when we say, so why don't I cover kind of the basics of what we're going to build tonight and then we'll kind of hit on some of the key concepts or the pivot points um, for what you're going to need to know to kind of be fluent with the different things we do tonight um, and then we can ask questions and then from there we'll send you off, work on your own, work with peers, um, and kind of work through the session one documents that we put together and then afterwards at the end we'll come back and look at some more advanced topics. Does that sound cool to all of you? Okay. So the basic thing we're going to do tonight is make sure that you are set up on your Rails environment, which it sounds like most of you are. Um, and so we're using, we're getting you set up in the environment. We're using some, something called the Vagrant Virtual Machine. Do you guys know what a virtual machine is? Anybody not know what that is? Okay. So pretty much, there's a couple system specific configurations that need to be in place for Ruby on Rails to work. You need to have a C compiler, you need to have the Ruby language installed, you need to have Postgres, which is the database that we're going to be working with. Um, and so rather than trying to have you download and install those kind of on your own, um, we just pulled from the Rails core team. They have a box, a virtual machine box that's already configured for Ruby on Rails development. So we just gave you that, and that's what the Vagrant machine is. So it's pre-configured, um, it shouldn't cause you any issues, and it will allow you to focus on understanding Rails rather than understanding Linux system configurations. So that's what we're doing there. Um, also, one thing that I just want to mention is that you're probably going to want to have a nice text editor, um, and the reason why is that's kind of where you write your code. Um, you're going to be using the command line and the text editor. So um, on there, we give a couple suggestions um, Sublime is a really great text editor. Um, there's also Notepad++ for Windows, TextMate for Mac, Gedit for Linux. Pretty much you can pick and choose whatever works for you. There's no big constraint on what you use. Um, and then the other thing that I want to mention is how many of you are familiar with using the command line with <coughs> kind of getting around the computer and making stuff work? Okay, how many, so it looks like about a quarter of you are not. Cool. I actually hated the command line at first. Um, Rails actually has a lot of scripting and a lot of command or executables that are run via the command line. And we're going to be using those, and I want to encourage you to embrace those, because that's really where the power is. So just heads up on that. And then how many of you, how many of you worked with version control before? Okay. A little more than half. Um, have you guys mostly SVN, Git. We're going to be sticking with Git so you guys can just throw stuff on GitHub real quick. Um, so you'll want to make sure that you also have that installed on your machines. Um, so, and once you do that, your environment should be set up as long as you got favorites up and running. 
So the basics of what we're going to build tonight, um, we're going to create a Rails application, and then we're going to be working with something called a scaffold object. Um, how many of you don't know what a scaffold object is? Cool. So you've probably heard that Rails is a model view controller framework, right? Maybe you have, maybe not. The scaffold object essentially describes um, an object that already has a model, a controller, and views. So you can create, um, you can work with objects. So let me show you what a scaffold object looks like. So this is gonna, when you're done tonight, you're gonna be able to do this on your own computers. So I'm right here on my local host. So this is coming off of my computer, off my, um, the Vagrant box. And I'm able to go to the slash tasks directory and it lists all the tasks that are in the Rails environment. I can create a new task here and I'm going to give it a name of um, commit and push code to GitHub. Um, use Git. So what this allows me to do, it allows me to create an object. Um, and when I can create a task, that makes a call to the database, it instantiates the object, and then saves it. Um, and then from there, I can go back to the index, and I can see that the object was created. And I realize it's a little bit far away, but there's, there's one entry, there's two entries, and you can make multiple entries. Um, on the right side, there's gonna be links. This is where you can look at the object, and this is the object that we just created. You can edit the object, essentially change the contents. You can then save those changes. And you can also, you can delete that object. So the idea is that you can create, read, update, and delete objects in your Rails environment. That's what we want to get you to the point of doing by the end of tonight. So that's what a scaffold object. It's a model which is a Ruby class, and it allows you to interact with the database. You're creating a controller, which allows you to interact with the HTTP, um, sending and receiving, kind of on the web server level. And then you also create the views, which is the HTML, the stuff that you see here. So all those, those three components together, people call that a scaffold. And that's just the Rails terminology. It's not industry kind of agnostic. It's more just that's what Rails calls it. So that when you generate a code, you can just specify generate Rails scaffold, and you get that. So we've created a kind of a, a walkthrough for you. Um, it's got a lot of the commands right there for you, so it's pretty much copy and paste. Um, the idea is that you can walk through it on your own um, and um, kind of work through issues. That's freaking neat. Sorry, I made you guys much. So, um, essentially, what you're going to be, we encourage you to go for it. Yes. Sorry. Um, let me just write it up here. And then we're going to have 
have you update the database with the changes that you'll need to have in order to make the Rails app work, and then instructions for how to see it actually work on your machine. So that's kind of the basic idea. We have instructions if you're flying and want to keep going. Um, we can kind of help you figure out the next step, but that's what we want to do tonight. And then after that, we'll cover some more advanced stuff. So, um, any questions for you? Yeah.